today. We discuss the Grubel 4C Handmade 1, 43.5 millimeters in white gold. This timepiece was announced for 2019, and as a result of its laborious fabrication, only two to three of these will be made each year. Now, while it might sound redundant to describe a Grubel 4C watch as handmade, there are largely handcrafted watches, and then there are purely handcrafted watches. This timepiece was fabricated using techniques from the 17th, 18th, and 19th century, techniques that today are rarely seen outside of prototyping. That is why Grubel 4C, which makes 150 to 200 watches each year with a large degree of hand craftsmanship, can only make two to three of these each year with nothing but hand craftsmanship. So let's talk about what that means. This watch is the product of 6,000 man hours of manual fabrication. That equates to about three years of full-time work. 95% of the watch is entirely handcrafted by traditional technique. The only parts that are not handcrafted are the sapphires, the pivot jewels, the case gaskets, the strap spring bars, and the mainspring itself. Everything else is laboriously crafted. How laboriously crafted? Well, consider this. The lever in the escapement, that is the anchor, that component takes 1.5 months to create by a specialized contractor to Grubel 4C who only fabricates that part. This gentleman used to work at Grubel 4C, today acts as a contractor to the Handmade One project, and that's just the lever. One wheel in the train of this movement takes 600 times as long to fabricate as the train wheel on a conventional Grubel 4C watch. The tourbillon requires 35 times as much time to fabricate as a conventional Grubel 4C tourbillon, and each individual screw, the product of 12 different manual steps, requires approximately 8 man hours to fabricate. This is a handmade watch. So let's talk about how this handmade watch fits on the wrist. So it is 43.5 millimeters in diameter, 13.6 millimeters thick as I measured. Grubel 4C claims 13 and a half. As you can see, the watch is broad but not huge by Grubel 4C standards. The lugs are handsomely tapered. The total distance across the wrist is 52.2 millimeters. It has a nice modern 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The timepiece is probably suitable for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference, and a lot of that comes down to the gorgeous tapering of the lugs. The case is fabricated by manual means. All the finishing, that is the polishing, the satination, the beveling, that is done manually, and the actual turning of the case on a lathe is accomplished using a pantograph mimicry engine of a 19th century design, uh, very similar to what's used to create the hobnail dials, the tapisserie dials at Audemars Piguet. So a large template and a follower system is translated onto a smaller white gold blank that becomes the case. Here we have a Grubel 4C crown, Grubel 4C logo. We have a strap that, of course, is handcrafted, a wonderful suede calfskin. You can see that it's thick cut with sheer sides, a contrasting binding, and a little bit of an ecru coloration of the contrasting stitch that nicely matches the tone of the German silver bridges of the movement. Now, the buckle may look conventional at first glance, but even it has been freehand engraved on its underside. It is manually crafted, and you'll find that all the engraving on this watch has been done manually using eye and hand coordination and a burin chisel, one of three. Each one of these watches features the model year and then the note about whether the watch is one of three or one of two made that year. Rolling around to the dial side, Grubel 4C understands better than most brands that it's not just the finish of a movement that inspires awe, it's architecture, the relative size, proportioning, and placement of the components for dramatic effect. That is why Grubel 4C is state-of-the-art. It gives the owner both architecture and fine finish. Enamel is present in surprising quantities on this dial. As you can see, Grand Faux enamel for the chaptering outboard against which the minutes are read. So up to 20 firings at 800 degrees Celsius painted by hand on a gold base. The vitreous paint, which is essentially powdered glass, gets baked and then repeatedly baked 
and applied through a set of processes that result in the chaptering as well as the small seconds subregister track. Now we have bridges and plates here that are frosted by a wire brush. So if you can think of a barbecue grill brush, right? A very stiff set of steel bristles on a brush. That's exactly how this finish is accomplished. The brush is dabbed over and over atop the bridges to create this roughed, matted finish that you see, almost like sandpaper. The material is German silver, or since we are making this watch in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland, where Grubel 4C is based, we shall call it Maichot, which is the French term for an alloy of nickel and copper and zinc used to create components of a watch. So it is the copper that gives German silver, or Maichot, its lovely golden hue. You can see that the faces of these bridges are mirror polished, and then we have a to die for manual bevel started with a file and finished up using probably gentian wood, as that is how traditional anglage is laid down. Now, these little screws that take eight hours to fabricate, some explanation is in order. They're black polished across their top. On their bottom, the bottom of the stalk, the threaded stalk, that is mirror polished on its bottom. And then the circumference of each screw as well as the slot is beveled. You could see that this watch features what are known as inward angles. You could see them well atop the barrel stack. You can see there is a point where two bevels meet in a sharp inward cleft. That is remarkably difficult to achieve, and you will even find Geneva Hallmark movements that don't include one interior angle. Well, you can see that there are quite a few on this dial, and quite a few more on the case back. You can see the individual finger bridges include sharp inward bevels, but then we also have an inward angle everywhere the beveled inner circumference and spokes of the five-spoke wheels meet. So on each one of these five-spoke wheels, they're satinated on their tops and their bottom, they're beveled on their inside, resulting in 40 individual inward angles on each one of the five-spoke wheels. You'll also note that no expense is spared in the fabrication of the screws as we have both fired blue screws and black polished screws, the watch includes both. Now, black polish, which is a very fine specular or mirrored finish, that is achieved by long experience, trial and error, and ultimately dedication and application over hours of work. So you can see the mirrored finish on the half bridge for the tourbillon is optically smooth and perfectly consistent across the rounded surface of the finger bridge. This is finished up with a diamond paste to give it that mirrored shine. All the hands that are blue, they are fired blue steel, and it is a bit of a trick to get all of the fired blue steel of the dial the same color. So you'll note there's no color gradient between the screws and the hands. They are exactly the same. You could see that atop the barrel we have an indexing wheel that is entirely black polished, the center of the hands black polished, and you can see the cannon pinion at center also black polished on its top. Take note of these finger bridges. They are satin finished across their bases. The bases have beveled edges, and then the tops of them are rounded and mirror finished. You can see that pivot jewels are set in golden chaton, and this is a nod to the pocket watch era of watchmaking in La Chaux de Fonds. Back in the era when machining was not quite as precise, it was not common to press a jewel directly into a bridge or a plate. Instead, a precision golden chaton would be created, the jewel would be pressed into that, and then the chaton itself would either be pressed into the bridge, as you see here on the reverse side, or fixed in place using fixing screws, as you see for the barrel arbor on the dial side. Very, very traditional. The tourbillon is entirely handcrafted, and by the way, you can see adjacent the year plate we also have a tourbillon cage that is a combination of satin finished and black polished, and the height of ambition, the top of the tourbillon cage is rounded over, so these are not straight flat bars, they are rounded just like the half bridge for the tourbillon. So the tourbillon includes 69 parts, and it weighs about one half of a gram. The hairspring is laboriously rolled out from a raw alloy, and then shaped by hand to form the overcoils. The overcoils center the mass of the hairspring and allow the watch to keep excellent time in any physical position. By centering the mass of the hairspring, you do away with the variation in rate by position. Now, the 
Balance wheel itself, which is free sprung for durability, is adjusted in six positions, which is ultra haute de gamme. But what's really important is that both the white gold variable inertia bolts and the wheel itself were fabricated manually. Again, a reason that this tourbillon takes 35 times as long to fabricate as a more industrially fabricated Grubel 4C tourbillon regulator. Again, that's 35 times longer than a Grubel 4C tourbillon, not some mass-produced watch. Important to note, the balance is enormous with a huge amount of inertia, and it beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and this is a one-minute tourbillon. Nevertheless, the watch still has a separate constant seconds display. It does not rely on the tourbillon carriage as the seconds hand of the timepiece. So, manual wind, 60-hour power reserve, beautifully executed, beating away at 3 hertz, and all of this is water resistant down to 30 meters. On the reverse side, we have some distinctive finishing. You can see there's a very fine satination on the finger bridges for the train. And then we have a technique called gratte main that is rendered on the German silver base plate. And that essentially translates to hand scraping. So no two of these base plates will be exactly the same since the scraping is done by manual means. You can see the ratchet wheel on the bottom of the barrel stack is entirely black polished, and if you were to look very close, you would even see that the teeth of the wheel are beveled internally. Again, no detail overlooked, no expense spared. The year plate is in rose gold, the name plate is in white gold. The longer you look, the better it gets, which is pretty much the opposite of any conventional watch. It's important to note that because the rejection rate for these handmade parts is so high, over 800 parts must be fabricated in order to obtain the 281 parts that go into the making of the watch. And no expense is spared, but also no tolerance is given for imprecision. Although these are all handmade parts, Grubel 4C has an internal standard that the parts from one handmade one to the next must be interchangeable in case the watch ever needs service from parts stock down the line. That is almost impossible to do, interchangeable parts that are also entirely handmade. One of the reasons Grubel 4C can do this is because of its work with the Time Aeon Foundation and the Naissance d'une Montre project by which artisans are first taught entirely manual vintage techniques for building a watch and then become teachers of those techniques to preserve the craft. This watch benefits from the knowledge gained at Grubel 4C through that project. There is nothing about this watch that isn't exquisite or even unique as a watch like this, even from the likes of Grubel 4C, is scarce in this modern era. How scarce? Well, how about two to three per year? Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.